Hello and welcome. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, anti-corruption fight gets a boost with the launch of Open Treasury Portal, mandating the Accountant General and MDAs to publish daily financial payments above 5 million naira. EFCC secures over a thousand convictions in 2019 as the anti-graft agency leads awareness walk across the country to mark the 2019 International Anti-Corruption Day. Deputy President of the Senate, Ove Omagege, pledges National Assembly's readiness to pass Electoral Act Amendment Bill by February 2020. And at least five people killed and 23 others rescued as volcano erupts on New Zealand Island. On business news tonight, President Buhari appoints Mohamed Nami as new chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, approves composition of the Revenue Agency's board. On sports news, World Anti-Doping Agency bans Russia from all major sporting events for the next four years. And from Abuja, President of the Senate calls for state of emergency in the power sector, says privatization has not yielded any tangible results in electricity supply. government's anti-corruption drive is being extended beyond the arrest and prosecution of suspects. As a preventative measure, the Office of the Accountant General has been mandated to issue a daily Treasury statement of the federal government's transactions, encompassing all inflow and outflow of ministries, departments and agencies. Details were provided at the launch of the federal government's Open Treasury Portal in Abuja. will further strengthen the federal government's drive towards curbing corruption through transparency and accountability. According to the Minister of Finance, over 800 ministries, departments and agencies have keyed into the federal government's integrated financial management information system. The launch of this platform, according to her, will further strengthen the federal government's drive towards curbing corruption through transparency and accountability. Public confidence and economic development are inseparable. So it is the cost of financing public uh, administration that we want, want to now use to be able to enable and strengthen the citizens to hold us accountable. There is an actual template on how this portal will work. The Minister of State for the Niger Delta, who represents President Muhammad Buhari at the event, spells out what is expected of the Office of the Accountant General and Key Agency. The transparency policy approved by the Federal Executive Council requires the following. One, the Accountant General of the Federation must publish a daily treasury statement which will provide information about what came into the national post and what went out every single day. Lawmakers, on the other hand, think differently on this latest initiative. They're suggesting that the policy be passed as a law. All these lofty policies and beautiful, beautiful policies that have been put in place, there is a need for the executive and the legislature to collaborate, to translate it into laws so that it will be insulated from policy somersault of successive governments. Thank you all. The need for more transparency and accountability in governance cannot be overstressed as it is tied to the livelihoods of most Nigerians. Besides the measure aimed at nipping corruption in the bud, over 1,000 convictions have been secured by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission in 2019. The acting chairman of the commission, Mr. Ibrahim Magu, shared these numbers in Abuja at an event organized by the EFCC to mark the UN Day on Anti-Corruption, insisting that they will never give up, even when corruption fights back. Also at the event, Nobel laureate Professor Wale Shoyinka criticized the Department of State Services for the re-arrest of the convener of hashtag Revolution Now protest, Mr. Amoyele Shoure. Shut it down! Shut it down! 
The theme for the 2019 International Anti-Corruption Day is United Against Corruption and several civil society organizations are joining the Economic Financial Crimes Commission to work against corruption. The walk is rounded up here at the State House Banquet Hall for a frank conversation on the fight against corruption in the country. According to the 2019 report from United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, an estimated 117 million bribes are paid in Nigeria yearly, while bribery among public office holders reduced from 32.3% in 2016 to 30% in 2019. From January 2019 to November ending 2019, we are still counting, it's yet, the year is yet to end. We have recorded 1,070 convictions. It is very critical for the stakeholders in all sectors of the economy to ensure that they play by the rules and, discharge, and discourage all forms of corrupt practices. The global stage has a voice. But Nobel laureate Professor Wole Shoinka relates the recent rearrest of the convener of the hashtag revolution now protest, Mr. Moe Leshore, as acts of corruption. If the DSS is accused tomorrow of corruption, the DSS can say, yeah, this is hate speech. Off with his head. And then maybe when we get to court and the judge grants the poor felon temporary reprieve through bail, any security agency can then jump in the court, rearrest the felon, break into the citadel, the sanctuary of justice. And within these last few days, we've had even that institution being accused of corrupt practices. We had testimonies from those who've managed to escape the hell holes of the security agencies after being immured there for years without knowledge of their families. Let's stop being scared of expressions like revolution now. The book titled Curbing Electoral Spending, a Panacea for Public Corruption, was also unveiled at the event. The book is a compendium of discussions at the 2019 Democracy Day Anti-Corruption Summit. And as part of efforts to enlighten the public on the dangers inherent in corrupt practices, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission today embarked on an anti-corruption campaign across the states to mark the 2019 International Anti-Corruption Day. The commission also gives an account of its achievements so far. This report takes a look at the various activities that took place in Kano, Kwara, Edo and Akwaibom states. Every 9th of December, the Anti-Corruption Day is observed across the country by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to raise public awareness and educate the public on the ills of corruption. Zero corruption. Zero corruption. Activities carried out include sensitization walks, enlightenment talks and public interaction. This year, the event focuses on the power of unity in the battle against corruption. In Edo State, South-South Nigeria, security agencies, civil society organizations and members of the commission take to major streets on a walk. According to the commission, there's progress in the fight to curb the menace. We have secured more than 84 convictions in EFCC. And if you can remember vividly, the last anti-corruption we told you we scored about 52 convictions. So you can look at the difference we did the span of few months that we have really made uh, positive progress. It's a similar scenario in Akwaibom State, but the call is on the public to give information to enhance the anti-graft crusade. Uh, there are a lot of challenges here in Nigeria. You see, we, are, we don't give information. The public spirit do not, do not normally give information. Uh, we are the people at our end scouting for all this information. That's why we always, at intervals, continue to uh, in the, uh, synthesize people. Let them at least come along with us to fight it uh, together. In Ilori, the Kwara State Capital, the state governor as well as other government officials joined the march. For Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak, the fight against corruption is a responsibility for all. It is important we're all hand in hand. It's not about them and us. 
we need to join hands together. We need to be part of the process because to develop our society, we need to kill corruption. If we recover 10 houses and cash recovery within this short period is in excess of 3.6 billion, 3.6 billion naira. This is both at interim and, uh, and final picture from suspected treasury looters. And in Kano State, the commission says the fight has so far yielded positive results. One area that has been an area of concern has been that of the cybercrime, which has given this country a very bad name. And the commission has actively been on the trail of suspected internet fraudsters with almost daily arrests and prosecution. In the Kano Zonal Office of the Commission from January 2019 till date, we have filed over 100 criminal cases in court and they are in various stages of prosecution. The event was also commemorated in Lagos State where the same issues are highlighted. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission says a collective resolve at all levels for accountability and transparency is needed to keep the fight against corruption going until the menace is eradicated for wholesome nation building. Now let's take another look at this and joining us live from Abuja to examine this renewed anti-corruption drive is the head Transparency International in Nigeria, Mr. Awal Musa. Thanks a lot for joining us on the News at 10. Well, let me start off by asking Thank you, you just how significant you think this open treasury portal is um, that was launched today by the federal government. How significant is this today? I think it is very significant, very important to ensure that uh, we bring some sanity in terms of uh, uh, the kind of fraudulent you know, um, payment, double payment. Uh, sometimes you have ghost workers in hundreds of, you know, uh, uh, names. In fact, some, you know, in, even in thousands. So to have a central treasury single account register portal, I think it is going to help, you know, in terms of eliminating duplication and ghost workers. Because Nigeria had suffered a lot from this dubious, you know, practice. And I think having this, it is a great achievement. And I think we want to commend uh, government to, you know, uh, for this um, effort to bring together a uh, single treasury, you know, um, account portal which will hopefully uh, be used effectively and judiciously in order to ensure more transparency in the you know, payment you know, processes. I'm already looking at the logistics of it, you know, in terms of the framework. You know, anti-corruption crusaders have always talked about the need to strengthen institutional frameworks, you know, to be able to, to make the fight effective. What do you think we should do to tighten the system to prevent us having to arrest and then confiscate assets? And what can we do in terms of that particular framework? Uh, these are issues we've been talking about. Uh, the government must ensure that um, all those areas that, you know, those opportunistic areas where people in, you know, government uh, use to siphon public funds are in the first place are blocked are not, you know, they are not able to have access to that. If you do that, you know, and couple with the fact that you engage, you know, in public education and ensure sanction for whoever violates the law, I think it will go a long way, you know. So we need to make sure that, you know, we have all the system in place. We need to ensure that the anti-corruption institutions are given the necessary support, both technical support, financial support, human support, uh, you know, personal support in order to be able to carry out their responsibility. I think, you know, it is also fundamental that, you know, uh, some of the, you know, uh, labs that we have and the gaps that we have in terms of, um, you know, uh, having independent, vibrant, you know, uh, media and civil society engagement is also guaranteed because fight against corruption, you must ensure that the civil space, the freedom of expression, independent judiciary is also allowed, you know, and practice. Respect of the rule of law is all part of the fight against corruption because if there's impunity in the system, you would have discovered that you all you are actually working towards addressing the corruption. At the same time, also, you are undermining your effort by yourself, by refusing to comply with, you know, uh, rule of law, with, you know, um, uh, uh, constitutional, you know, prohibition. So I think, you know, um, there are some gaps that we need to fill up in order to ensure that we attain the complete fight against corruption. 
currently government is doing its best, uh, especially the EFCC, RCPC, they are doing their best, but I think they need more support you know, from all Nigerians, including government and the general public, in order to be able to achieve the, work that, the good work that they are doing. Uh, so far, they have kept this, you know, issue of the fight against corruption, you know, uh, as a front banner, and many Nigerians are actually appreciating that. The level of confiscation of, you know, looters' uh, properties, both in Nigeria and abroad, is a clear testimony that, you know, if we do more, we can be able to uh, stop these looters. And not only that, we can even block the opportunity for them to even loot, because you know, we don't even need to wait until when they have stolen the money, they take it out. The illicit financial flow got, uh, get, uh, getting out from Nigeria, from West Africa alone, we, you know, Nigeria constitutes over 70%, and we have over 15 billion being stolen every now and then, every year. So if we are able to block those opportunities for public office holders to steal the money, the it, you know, I think, you know, we would have had less job in terms of trying to even spend a lot of energy, a lot of resources to recover some of this, uh, 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 you know, money and properties. Again, we need to have beneficial ownership register to ensure that we know who is behind uh, or who own certain companies because sometimes they hide under all sorts of uh, uh, dubious name to support public funds. And then again, we need to ensure that this, this is sanction because if, you know, sanction is not being seen to be fair and to be for all, then that will also create, you know, um, a wrong impression in the fight against corruption. I think government must do everything possible to ensure that this fight against corruption is not just limited only to also Abuja, but we should also ensure that the fight against corruption is also in local government, in the states, you know, because this is where the bulk of Nigerians are living, not just Abuja. We want to commend, you know, the effort of all those you know, who are making it possible for us to sanitize this country against corruption and corrupt people. The electoral process must be sanitized because that is the process in which looters are coming with dubious or stolen money to make sure that they hijack powers and continue to support this money. So if you don't address electoral integrity, you will continue to produce looters and people who have no, you know, um, interest to ensure that this country is sanitized from corruption and corrupt people. So we need to work on that. Again, we also need to make sure that, you know, there's a proper sanction. Anybody who does that, uh, anybody that does something that is contrary to the law, most, whether irrespective of his political affiliation or irrespective of whatever, you know, uh, ethnic or religious or geographical location, if he or she did something wrong, the law should catch up with him. Again, right. the defense you. budget yeah. must be also scrutinized. We need to have a reform in the security sector. There's no way you can achieve successful fight against corruption if the security sector is also um, uh, uh, corrupt. Currently, we know we have a lot of challenges, and that is why the issue of insurgency, criminality in Nigeria is becoming like a nightmare, because we right, need to reform the security sector. Thank you, thank you so very sector. much. The we need to also provide them with the National. resources. Thank you so much for your views. Um, we we'll, we'll just really have to rush off now, but thank you so much for the point that you were trying to make there. That's the head Transparency International Nigeria, Mr. Awal Musa, for joining us on the news at 10 tonight. And in part two, after the break, President Buhari joins other leaders at a forum on Aswan, Egypt, to discuss agenda for sustainable peace and development on the continent. That's in a moment. Be joined.